Glasgow must be the kickoff of a decade, a decade of ambition and innovation to preserve our shared future. Climate change is already ravaging the world. We've heard from many speakers. It's not hypothetical. It's not a hypothetical threat. It's destroying people's lives and livelihoods and doing it every single day. It's costing our nations trillions of dollars. Record heat and drought, fueling more widespread and more intense wildfires in some places and crop failures in others. Record flooding and what used to be a once in a century storms are now happening every few years. In the past few months, the United States has experienced all of this and every region of the world can tell. Yes, this Kelly. is the fifth day of the president's overseas tour, and he was uh, seen on camera with his eyes closed. It appears that perhaps he was dozing. And in these settings, uh, cameras are all around. And the camera caught uh, President Biden, who turned 79 later this month, uh, with his eyes closed for a period of time. And you're right. These can be embarrassing situations. You have the contrast of leaders, including President Biden, calling for the urgency of these issues of addressing in climate and uh, a moment like that in a session uh, can be uh, a political uh, obstacle for a moment all right guys so that is literally <laughs> sleepy joe uh dozing off doing the climate change summit in glasgow scotland um basically the same day right the same summit that he told us that hey you know climate change is an existential threat it's costing us trillions of dollars you know, you have wildfires everywhere, extreme weather events, all that stuff. And that's not to deny that those things are happening, right? That's not what I'm saying. I just find it funny how every single time the Democrats tell us that we should worry about something, their actions always indicate differently, right? That they don't really care about the things that they claim they care about, right? But they want you to change your personal behaviors to fight these existential threats that they really don't seem all that concerned about, right? Sounds familiar. This is something that they do a lot, right? And uh, he's just not the only climate warrior that, uh, in my opinion, in which his actions don't seem to really match up with his words, as we also have Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, right? Two billionaires fighting against climate change, right? vacationing on a yacht right out in a turkish beach where they flew in 50 gas on helicopters right that to me sounds like a whole lot of fossil fuels being consumed and let me not remind you guys how uh bill gates claims that you know again like joe biden that this is an existential threat that we must worry about and that we must take care of so much so that we need to be worried about cow farts a new york city is going to be built every month for the next 40 years what does that mean? Is that good or bad? <laughs> well, I use that as an opportunity to explain that when people think of climate change, they think mostly about electricity. And that's only a quarter of the emissions come from coal, natural gas plants that are generating your electricity. They, when we make materials like steel and cement, uh, those two alone are about an eighth of the emissions. One crucial part is agriculture, and one thing you said you were particularly surprised by was how great a problem bovine flatulence is. Do you exactly. want to explain what that is and why it's a problem? Yeah, so the animals that can eat grass have very unusual stomachs that have these uh, bacteria that are methanogenic in there, and so they leak uh, natural gas both out the front and the back. Uh, and so people have said, well, let's change the hay or throw some things in there. Uh, and it's been, nobody knows how to get rid of no that. Knows how to get cows to stop farting. Exactly. Our burping. Uh, <laughs> and so there is artificial meat, but that's at a very early stage. But that's another big source of greenhouse gas emission. So, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that the people who acknowledge the problem, which I'm think is fantastic that they understand the breadth of innovation required before you can get anywhere near to what we have to do, which is zero. If it was a 50% reduction, then you could ignore, okay, leave the cows alone. Uh, uh, but because we're trying 
to avoid the temperature continuing to go up, you do need to go to zero. Otherwise, you're, you're continuing to have temperature increase. All right, guys. So we, we have to, according to Bill Gates, get the emissions down to zero, right? Zero. That means that, listen, we can't be affording to be out here doing activities that is contributing to this problem, right? You can't be afford to be doing all this stuff, right? Especially when you're a billionaire and you're consuming all these resources, right? And like Bill Gates said, it's important to acknowledge the problem, but we really got to understand the breadth of the situation and must, what must be done, okay? But like all these people, um, you know, these elitists right here, whether it's some of these billionaires or some of these uh, politicians, um, they talk a big game, but when it comes down to actual action in their own personal lives, they're not following the rules, right? They're not following the rules because uh this little excursion here by jeff bezos and bill gates um does not seem to be uh reducing the carbon footprint and i want people to notice something right i did an earlier video today about elon musk right i will defend a billionaire's right to keep his own money right just because out of principle i don't believe the government should really should be taking people's money right that they're hard-earned money however uh I will call out billionaires when they are hypocrites and when they are not practicing what they preach, right? When they're telling other people that they must change their lives, that we have to radically transform the planet and the things that we do to fight climate change. But yet it seems that they're not actually really concerned about that, right? As again, these guys are partying and uh, emissions producing yachts and flying out in private jets and helicopters that it, it's disproportionately contributing to the problem. So let's actually read here. Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos were slammed as hypocrites for lecturing the world on the need to combat climate change by reducing carbon footprint, while at the same time reportedly vacationing on yachts off the coast of Turkey. Multi-billionaire and Microsoft founder Gates celebrated his 66th birthday in Turkey in the company of fellow tycoon and Amazon founder Bezos on Friday. Bezos was among the 50 guests invited to Gates' uh, private party beside the Mediterranean. It's not clear whether any of Gates' family helped him celebrate at his exclusive bash. Boy, I wonder what type of enter entertainment they had on that yacht, right? They probably had the Mediterranean's finest, right? Finest. They ain't talking about food, okay? <laughs> uh, Gates, once the richest man on earth, who has dropped to fourth on the Forbes rich list, ranking with $124 billion, transporting his guests by helicopter from his two million a week rental yacht Lana in the Sea Me Beach Club in Fethiye. The jet fuel used to power helicopters emits 21.095 pounds of carbon dioxide per gallon burn. The helicopters travel approximately 10.75 miles per gallon. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Again, sounds like a whole lot of emissions, right? Uh, according to reports, Bezos also traveled to Gates' super yacht by helicopter. The Blue Origin founder is said to have made the 120-mile trip journey by chopper from Govoka to the resort town of Fethiye. Based on the same estimations, <laughs> Bezos' helicopter emitted 215 pounds of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Both Bezos and Gates are reportedly staying on super yachts each of which emits 7,020 pounds of carbon dioxide per year or 19 tons per day. Okay, so they both are staying on super yachts, right? They got a yacht for each one of them, right? A yacht for each one of them. Again, I'm not hating. I literally don't care, right? If they want to live their lives that way, that's fine. But don't lecture me about climate change if you're going to live like this. I'm not like the progressives. I don't hate on how the rich live, right? If you made that money, hey, bro, you're an entrepreneur. You took risks. You put your own money up. You made it. Hey, bro, you enjoy it, right? You enjoy it. But don't lecture me about climate change while you're enjoying these uh, carbon dioxide <laughs> emissions producing activities, right? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Look at this. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Again, not hating on the yacht. It's nice. If I was rich, I would buy one too. <laughs> Social media users uh, reacted with fury, noting that Bezos and Gates were contradicting their own statements about the need to tackle climate change. The sick and twisted 66 uh, birthday party tweeted one Twitter user who accused them of having a do as I say, not as I do attitude. 
Another Twitter user commented, the horrendous energy waster Bill Gates makes his contribution to CO2 reduction for his 66th birthday by having his fat body transported by his own yacht and then by helicopter to a certain place. Guess the rules don't apply for them, according to Rose Y. R.D. Carrington commented, more from people who will be bashing the rest of us again next week about climate change. Another Twitter user wrote, these are the people putting us in our place and lecturing us about the so-called climate crisis. A Twitter user with the handle Lanty commented in response to reports of the Bezos Gates meeting, but climate change, y'all. Another <laughs> Twitter user wondered whether Bezos and Gates had no climate change fear. Gates Lana Yacht boasts a gym, jacuzzi, beach club, and swimming pool. Insider reported after the party, Bezos, who is worth $177 billion, according to Forbes, was reported to have returned by helicopter to his yacht flying Fox docked in Gokofa. Attendees of the four-hour party were secured of their privacy in the lavish and secluded resort as workers at the bash were prohibited from using their phones. Whew. Yeah, I mean, hey. Like I said, man, you know, I'm not hating on the life that they live in, right? I wish I could live the life. If I had a yacht, a super yacht, who knows? I would invite all you guys to come chill on my yacht, <laughs> right? If I had the money like that. But again, my, my issue is the do as I say, not as I do uh, mentality here, right? If climate change is the threat that uh, the Democrats and the left want us to believe, and I want to believe it, right? Because I want to believe the science, right? I want to believe that it's a threat. But again, you got people like John Kerry taking private jets everywhere. These guys, these billionaires, these climate warriors flying in helicopters, <laughs> emitting CO2 into the atmosphere everywhere, yachts. Again, don't care. Don't care about the party itself. I just care about the fact that it seems hypocritical. That's all it is, right? And it's the same thing when it comes to this virus. What these Democrats tell you, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that, blah, 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 such and such and such, yada, yada, yada. But yet... Every time you look, they're not wearing masks. They're not socially distancing. They're not following the rules, but they want to lecture everybody else on it. And the whole White House and the Biden administration, it seems, is uh, catching the virus. But again, blame everybody else, right? But every time you look, they're not following the rules. Again, just kind of reminds me of that. This is par for the course when it comes to these people. This is why I don't try to control people's lives, right? This is why I don't have, try to control people's lives. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.